for one fight night 24 brooks versus ballard uh look all i have to say is that i'm uh, glad. Real, quick, real quick too don't forget like subscribe all that stuff apple podcast spotify twitch we're everywhere story the fight story the fight.com yes. list all of our socials um but yeah thank you on- thank you will for yeah. promoting us Holy smokes, maybe I should try that every once in a while, huh? Yeah, we got to remember to do that when we switch over to one because this will be a separate video. <laughs> oh, that is true. That is true. Yeah. Uh, but yes, so I'm glad that this one event went down, that we got to see this on Friday after seeing what I saw from the UFC event on Saturday because I was like, the production's fantastic, but then just banger after banger. Um uh, Sloppy you know, bangers. No, just kidding. No sloppy bangers. I know that a lot of fans sloppy, don't huh? like hearing sloppy banger, but yeah. there's bangers left and right, man. Dude, come on. Muay Thai with four ounce gloves. <laughs> what is better? Yeah, it's good, dude. It's, it's good. so good. Oh, my <laughs> God. And then I know that all the time you continue hearing, you know, one has the best fighters in the world. And, okay, look, every organization is going to say this. Mm-hmm. But – as I continue seeing some of these fighters, I start thinking to myself, like, how would they end up doing against, you know, yeah, this yeah. person and that person in the UFC? And I think to myself, like, I think they could hold their own in a, in a striking match, man. Like, if we bring some people from the sure. UFC over to MMA uh, or to a Muay Thai, four-ounce gloves, mm-hmm. how many of them would get pieced up? I mean, you think there's a – well, look, I wish their MMA roster was bigger and had some more depth to it. I will say that. Um, but if you start comparing, like if you're saying just strikers, it's I don't think it's even close. Oh my god, you know, it's amazing. Um, one has striking, some striking, so creative. Yeah. Glory has some good strikers right now. Um, Rise has some good strikers. Um, they're definitely out there, you know. K one's doing stuff. Like there's good strikers everywhere, but one just has like it's just fucking crazy when you go through the list of the top strikers. Um yeah. if you're doing striking matches, uh yeah, one one cleans house if they went up against UFC fighters in striking fights. Yeah, um, Genevieve says uh, the Muay Thai heavy cards are always so good. And, you know, yeah. I agree because I've seen some of the one cards where it's heavy kickboxing, and mm-hmm. I don't mind it. It's also really good. But, dude, just nothing compares Muay Thai with four ounce gloves. It's nothing. So exciting. So, so good. Exciting. All right. Do you want to get started on the main event? Yeah, main event was not Muay Thai. It was MMA. Jared it was Brooks Jared versus, uh, Ball Gustavo Ball. But, hey, dude, by the way. Uh, Jared Brooks walking out, monkey mask on. I love it. Uh, okay, the way that dude. he comes out with the bananas all the time. Yeah, he's just, everybody just crowd. goes up to the front row and they're like reaching out, like, "Can I have one? Can I have one?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so happy Great. too. There's this lady yeah. that he gave a banana to. She like gets it, and, like starts like bowing and like just super excited, <laughs> like shaking the banana. I was like, "Look at that sweet crowd over there." He's a man yeah. of the people. He truly is, dude. The monkey god. The monkey guy. But that mask is so good, too. I don't know. I just love his energy as soon as he walks out. Uh, mm-hmm. Honestly, as soon as he walked into uh, the arena, like, he just looks game face on, ready to go. Yeah. He looks so serious, so much so that Gustavo, like, even when they were, you know, first doing the announcing and, you know, the whole touch gloves, and Gustavo looks at uh, at Brooks and points at him and, like, looks yeah. up at him. It's like, you see this guy? <laughs> so funny, <laughs> well, dude. Well, Brooks, don't forget, I mean – Brooks, when he was in the UFC, uh, he took Davis and Figueredo to a split decision. You know, like he, his only loss in the UFC was was a split decision to Figueredo, and then when he he knocked himself out with a slam. That was the only time times he lost in the UFC. Uh, I thought it was crazy that they they uh, cut him. And then in one, the only time he's lost in one was his last fight when he was DQ'd for slamming Pascio on his head, and that's where how he lost his belt. Pascio then injures his knee, so they make this fight for the interim belt. And you know Brooks wants that belt back. And you could tell, dude, like you said, he's just locked in immediately. And you're like, all right, this guy means business. Yes. He he lost his belt, but he didn't – no one took the belt from him, right? It's not yeah. like he got knocked out or submitted or lost even a decision. It was something that he did that made him lose his belt. Uh, no disrespect to Pacio. And I do want to see that fight. And I, I, I saw that fight live in the Philippines the first time. But Brooks is, I think, on another level, dude. He just is. And Ballard hits like a truck. He's got some very crafty things. He throws that jumping switch kick. Like, he's very crafty in there, and he cracks. Um, but Brooks is just fucking complete, dude. 
He's just so complete. And Balor, really known for his wrestling, right? And uh, shout yeah, out Jeremy saying Short King versus Short King. Thank you to both yeah. these guys for doing it for the Short Kings. It's greatly appreciated. <laughs> I don't know if anybody remembers, but when I got to do the podcast live with Will from his house, <laughs> uh, one of the very first comments was, I didn't realize how small Romero is. Either that or <laughs> Will's a giant, and it's kind of a combination of the two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yes. Uh, well, you, you give was, a shout out to Balor. I'll give a shout out to uh, Nabil. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, dude. But yes, uh, very good. Uh, you know, as soon as they hit the ground, like I know that Balor, everybody was talking about his wrestling, but the control mm -hmm. that Brooks yeah. had the entire time. And I felt like he was really able to do anything that he wanted to with Balor. I know Balor ended up on top real quick. Yeah. For a split and second. To, and what Brooks even said, he's like, that's the first time I've ever, ever been on my back in an MMA fight. So props yeah. to Balor. Yeah. So it's not like he's a nobody, you know, Balor's good. No, but if you've uh, seen his fights, you know that, yeah. Brooks had his back, right? A majority of the time that they were on the ground. Uh, yeah. Ballard did uh, initially a decent job of protecting against the rear naked choke, right? But mm -hmm. then what happened? Yeah, eventually he's he switched, right? He he fought the top hand or the yeah the locking hand, um, and then Jared Brooks switched uh, grip to to go to the other one. Uh, switches to the gable grip. Um, and then uh, it was tight, dude. It was real tight. That's oh, yeah, tough, dude. It. That's tough. Put the squeeze shout on. Shout out one, by the way, for letting us uh, show footage. Yeah, always shout out one for the footage. Um, but yeah, Brooks gets the interim belt back, and you can see what, what the relief getting that belt put back on him, you know? Uh, I mean, look at that shot. Also, fantastic photography all the time at the one events. They have like four yeah. people taking photos, and they always have such great shots. Look at that face, though. That's like, uh, dude, That's tough. If, can, can I get out of this? Like, you think for a split second, can I get out of this? Yeah. And then there's a certain time where you're like, my life's at danger. Yeah. My life's in danger right now. Like, if I don't tap, because <laughs> it's natural human tendency, right, to yeah. be able to say, like, hey, I need to survive. Mm -hmm. And, uh, th dude, there it is, man. It's just that sheer moment of panic where your body's like, no, you got to do something now. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Brooks gets the belt back. Uh, he calls out Pascio. Pascio's still injured, though. Calls out DJ, Mighty Mouse. I don't know if Mighty Mouse comes back at this point, but I do want to see Brooks versus Mighty Mouse. It would be fun, dude. I want that would to be see a lot it. of fun. That would be a lot of fun. People I, are going to say, oh, Mighty Mouse just beats him. And it's like, all right, that's what everybody said about Bilal and Leon. So, like, I don't care if, if the whole narrative is, yeah, this guy beats him. Maybe it's he does. It's never that simple. It's never maybe that he does. simple. And, maybe, yeah, he maybe he doesn't. That's why you fight. That's the beauty of the sport. Yeah, that's literally hey, why we have fights. Uh, one, I know that y'all watch. Um, let's plan a Mighty Mouse versus Brooks uh, next year. Write it down. USA, yeah. write it down. please. In America. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, let's do it. I'm there for it. All right. That's it for the main event. Anything else? No. And I know right. we're kind of short on time, so we'll start running through some of these. For we'll sure. Fights too. Uh, we got Misa Bastos versus Danielle Kelly. Tough matchup, dude. Daniel Kelly, yeah. everyone's saying, oh, she's the favorite here because she's like one's darling or whatever. Um, she's adorable. But yes, going into this, dude, it was rough because watching the video leading up to the fight, she's like, is Bostos better than me on paper? Yeah, way better. And I'm just like, no, girl, <laughs> let's not even talk about that. Don't even think about that. Don't yeah. read into it. Don't talk about it. Nothing. You're going in there. Who cares about what paper says? You're going in there, the better fighter. That's all that matters, right? As soon as yeah. I, I saw that, I was like, well, there it is. Well, that was one of the things she was saying, too. She's like, yeah, I'm a champion, but I'm always going to keep the underdog mentality, and that's why I'm going to I'm gonna do well because of that mentality going into matches. Mm. I'm never going to think that I'm the champ over these people. I'll always think of myself as an underdog, and that'll make me work harder, which to a certain extent I do understand. You know, Everybody's that, different, mindset. I guess, right? Because yeah. you also see fighters are like, I'm the best in the world. Line anybody up in front of me and I'll yeah. knock them down. Mm -hmm. But then there's some like Dustin. Dustin's like, I like being the underdog. I like people not expecting me to be the guy who wins. It makes me work harder. I got a chip on my shoulder now. And you could tell, dude, just from the start of this match, before the before the takedowns <laughs> and stuff, dude, she's trying to get the smackdowns. She's legitimately just slapping. Oh, I know. And I saw that and I was like, okay, well. At a point, at a certain point, Herb was like, hey, watch the, watch the snapdowns, huh? I mean, she, he was legitimately smacking her in the face, knocked her hair loose. Um, anytime she was standing over uh, Bostos and Bostos would sit up, she just fucking stiff arms her in the face and knocks her back down. 
I was like, damn, dude. Danielle yeah. Kelly's going for it, dude. And look, shout uh, out Genevieve. She says, oh, poor Danielle. I've never seen her nervous like that before a match. So same thing after the whole videos, yeah. you know, and I hear that. I'm like, that's not a good start. And then I see her walking, you know, they're walking down yeah, the hallway. Dude. And she's like looking all serious. And she looks at the camera and she goes, like, quick smile. <laughs> and then looks back and like gets all serious. I was like, oh, no. I, I don't know what's going on. This doesn't feel right. It doesn't look good. Yeah. And then um, the whole match was basically Danielle on top. Boss was doing a lot of like Barambola rolls for the leg locks and stuff like that. Yes. Daniel did a very good job defending, uh, landed a catch of her own. Um, but I think it was just, it was, uh, Bastos was just ultra aggressive and diving after those legs that ultimately won her the match. Uh, Herb Dean, and I have to, I'd like to talk, shout out Lucas right there in the picture. Uh, he judged this match. I don't have to talk to him because Herb called a catch for both of them. And then a second Quick catch. Yeah. Yeah. And though then he called a second catch for Bostos. And it's like, okay, well, per one's rules, Bostos won this match. Yeah. But then I saw the judges' scorecards. Um, and not all judges gave two catches to Bostos. I thought it was one on one personally. I thought personally, it was one catch one call one. for yeah. Bostos, one later on for uh Danielle. Yeah, Herb called another one late, late, close to the end of the match for mm. Bostos. Um, and some judges honored that, some didn't. Uh, and so it's interesting because I didn't know, again, I'll have to talk to Lucas, but I thought if the ref calls a catch, it's a catch. Uh, I didn't know that the judges. Yeah. What's also, the point of him calling catch then? Maybe it's for the viewers. Maybe it's for the fighters. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to know more about that, but, mm. um, yeah, regardless, I did think even if it was tied, I do think Basto still got the win here because if it's tied, all right, per the rules, submission, obviously you win. If no one's submitted, then the number of catches determine who wins. If catches are even, then it's about aggressiveness and uh, attempts. And Bastos, I thought, had more attempts. doesn't really matter if Danielle was on top the whole time. Bastos had more attempts at submissions. Yes. I thought she won the fight. A different form of think- aggression. Because people are still thinking, like, yeah. Danielle's being very aggressive, which she is. On top. Smacking yeah. her and then, like, mm-hmm. pressuring, but at the exact same time, the entire yeah. time boss was on her back, she's also trying to land submission after submission, which again is also aggression off her back, right? So yeah, correct. So I thought they got the right person. Um, I did not expect Bossos to get the decision though when they read it. I thought they're gonna give it to Kelly um mm-hmm. in a close match. Gave it to Bostos, and she looked so stoked, dude. She oh, was yeah. so stoked. And then when so they genuine. gave her the bonus, she was just like, This is amazing. Yeah. I know, and I think that's in my notes for this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, right here. Nothing better than seeing a smile on the fighter's face when they get a bonus from uh, well, Chachi Singyatong. Well, yeah. also, um, keep in mind, she's used to, like, grappling tournaments and stuff. ADCC, up until this year, women's divisions, if you win ADCC, uh, <laughs> I'm real low-key looking like John Anik right now. This is my first time here, so, yeah. Man. Holy hey, smokes. Shout out Juice Man. Thanks for hey, shout out Juice Man. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe, my man. I think that's a compliment too. Try Romero it. Anik. Romero Anik. Right. And actually, dude, uh, we have just as much hair of, as we as each other as yeah. well. So next time I might just roll without the uh, the hat. Uh yeah. so we can Show look more like Anik top. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but <laughs> the Anik top. I like but that. uh coming into one and you get a win. I'm sure she got paid well for the match itself, but then a fifty thousand dollar bonus. ADCC up until this year paid women's the winners uh, of the women's division six thousand dollars is the purse for winning ADC. For winning. Yeah. And here you go, uh, go with Sir Chachi uh Singyatong saying here's 50k. Yeah. I mean that's awesome. I'm no mathematician, but uh 50 that's a is lot a lot more. more. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more. Um, holy smoke. This this year well, to ADCC's credit to ADCC's credit this year they have bumped up the women's division to make the same as the men's division uh which is ten thousand dollars so still uh a drop in the bucket compared to a fifty thousand dollar bonus uh and Ganskow CJI will force more out ADCC in the future CJI I'm so fucking excited for that and yeah that's a million dollar prize so uh, and and entry I think everybody gets 10k just for competing in the CGI so it's like and this is when we start getting more top talent starting to focus on things like jujitsu right yeah Money when they know, hey, involved. I can make a living. <laughs> yeah, I can actually start making some money off this. It's not and I don't have seminars? to veer away and do something else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, yeah. that's that's awesome. The, the more people start getting paid for stuff like this, then athletes will decide to start going into these fields, and I can't wait. All yeah. right, you ready to move on to the next one? 
Yes, yes. We're short on time, right? We've got 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, 20 minutes. Uh, we have Nabil Anon versus Felipe Lobo. Uh, pour one out for my boy Lobo. Uh, I really like Lobo, dude. This is always going to be a tough matchup for anybody against Nabil um, because he's clearly uh, what is he six four? I don't know. What, I don't. I don't know what he's at, but he's fucking huge. Dude. Giant. He went. This is him up a weight class too. So it's like, God. Yeah, he's six four. Even, six four. Um, that's crazy, dude. And he uses it. He uses every inch of that. He's so good. Hundred forty-five pounds. Six four. Yeah, he's so that's good with insane. his long punches. He's so good with his kicks. He's. I mean, look at this picture here. He's coming down from the sky, dude. He's throwing crosses That's from insane. above you. Um, is, and when you do get close, he lights you up with knees. Um, he flies at you with knees. Uh, and Lobo, the whole fight, just couldn't get in, dude. He was trying, and he just could He did crack him a couple times, the left hand. Yeah, but there are far and few between, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um that, and that's something that Nabil maybe wants to work on because he would he was countering him off that right hand of his own. Mm-hmm. He'd throw the right hand, and as he's retreating it, the left hook would come around and, and crack him. Um, but uh, yeah, dude, it, it really goes to show you how fucking good Super Like is too, dude. Because Super Like blitzed through Nabil, and and you could see what Super Like did well against Nabil was he attacks the legs, right? Because obviously, if someone's that long, their legs are closer to you than their body and their head are so you kick yeah. the legs you force him to not want to be at that range because his legs getting shoot up and then as he retreats his legs he's now in a worse position to take punches so you can close the distance on him better and then when you do close the distance you just punch him straight in the chest don't even worry about hitting him in the head just punch yeah. him in the chest yep. uh and super like did that perfectly and since lobo then, had a lot of head hunting yeah, not, not too much to the body, which Lobo is very usually very active to the body, and I was surprised. He had this uh, nice step and jab. It, it wasn't even a step in. It was like a jump forward jab because he had yeah. to close that distance, and he landed it a couple times. Mm-hmm. But the, uh, when that's all you got, really, and that's the only way you can close the yeah. distance, Anon was able to make some quick adjustments too, right? Yeah. Uh, so props to Anon. Blunderbuff saying the Beal looked so much more polished compared to just a few fights ago even. Yeah, well, he's over there with uh, Mehdi uh, Zatut, and they're fucking – very high on him and they're saying that he's like a student of the game just absorbing everything they're telling him so uh it's very interesting to see what's next for him too i think he's he's got a bright future yes juice men saying uh one girls destroy most ufc girls look i i think i said this not that long ago i look forward to a lot of the women's fights in in one yeah they're good dude i mean we're gonna cover one a little bit later on uh yeah. but Dude, it's just action behind action behind action, one after another. I love it. Can't say the same thing about the UFC. Just you know, top echelon, maybe top five in, in some of these women's divisions, depending on the division, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it, with one, so many of the girls there just know how to throw down. Yeah. Uh, really cool. Nabil has the the Luffy hat from One Piece. and I Monkey to Luffy. This picture is so fucking cool, dude, of him throwing a hat a in the really crowd. really good picture. Great. Uh, True story. My son was monkey to Luffy for Halloween last year and he goes to school for his parade and multiple teachers were like, Oh, that's a nice Pinocchio costume. He was pissed. Nice. That's rough. Pissed. Very <laughs> rough, dude. <laughs> All right. Uh, you want to move on to the next one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gets detention afterwards. Um, we had, uh, Nagrab Fairtex versus dad. like, dude, did I pronounce it correctly? Did Wong like, uh, oh, damn, that was close. Did Wong? Like. I mean, you, you basically did it. Um, okay. Rematch here. I thought, you know, maybe this, the last fight should have been a title eliminator. They didn't do it. They rebooked the fight. Now it should definitely be a title eliminator. Um, I mean, it delivered again. The first fight was a banger. This fight first round. Uh, I mean, you can see the difference in styles immediately, right? Did Wong like wants distance. He wants to throw his kicks. He needs space to throw those kicks. Nakrab wants to put these hands on you. That's oh, yeah. all he cares about. He just wants to put some hands on you. Uh, his low kicks were good. Um, first round, I thought uh, Nakrab did a great job of pressuring the kicker and landing those shots. Second round, I thought Dead Wong like, fought back. I thought he was in this one. And immediately in the, se- in the second round, uh, Nakrab threw a low kick and Dead Wong like, checked it. And you could see when he put his leg back, it was like, oh. What, what do we got here? And I was like, is that the end of low kicks? No, it wasn't. He kept throwing. But 
uh, Dead Wong like fought very good off his back foot in the second round. Was making space, kicking him to the body. He had one combination where he does the outside leg kick, load on the ankle, and it sweeps the leg a little bit of uh, Nakrab. And as he's falling over, he catches them with the left hand. And I was like, fuck, that's sick. Yeah, that was awesome. Very cool. Uh, and then third round, I thought it's all tied up. And then uh, Nakrab fucking overwhelmed him, dude. That was crazy. And Grant did so much uh, good work uh, as soon as uh, that one leg was against the ropes. Yeah. Or against yeah. the corner. Like he would just start to unload there. And I guess that's where you're talking about how Nakrab wanted – or that one like wanted to maintain that distance, right? With some of those mm -hmm. kicks, the front kicks. Um, but yeah, as soon as that distance closed up against the ropes, up against the corner, that grab would just start unloading. Yeah. And uh, the finishing, well, not finishing, he went to decision, right? But uh, the biggest moment of the fight, it was kind of cool. Dead Wang like throws a kick. Uh, Neck Rob catches it, punches him, and then they trade, and then he cuts the other kick. Or no, that this I think this is actually the photo here. Uh, Dead Wong like kicks him to the body. Nekrob catches it, pauses like he's gonna punch him, and he's like, "I'll throw my own kick." He drops the leg, kicks. Dead Wong like catches it, and that's him catching this kick here. And he's like, "Oh, you got my leg? I don't care, dude." And he just turns over and hits him with that right hand, and that's the Savage. one that kind of started the fin the the knockdown sequence. Um, what a shot there! Look at that. I know that's a great photo. Do you want to see it in action? Let's watch that in action. Let's huh? do it. So he's got the kick, bam, that's that punch right Ooh, there. Yep, the picture yep. goes to the body, walks him down, and then there's that right. Three, two, drops him. Yeah, he was already rocked after that initial punch. You can yeah, see it. That's the one that hurt him, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Shout out Olivier Cost. Such a good job all night. Yeah, very good job. Yeah. I talked to him. I was like, dude, how are you doing this? You did the uh, the morning fights or, well, the night fights from the Friday fights before that. You have a couple hours of sleep, and then you do this. And he's like, I am skull emoji. I was like, damn, dude. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how you do it when you have that little sleep. He's like, I don't know either. <laughs> oh man, that's nuts. But he he does a fantastic job every single time, man. It's yeah, you know, it's crazy. All right. Also, shout out to uh, Ray Flores. I thought Ray Flores in the booth for this event was absolutely fantastic. I I don't know if you can get much better than he was that night. He was so good on the commentary. Anytime there was these moments where there was just a firefight, he's in the pocket yelling screaming every punch that's being thrown a spinning back fist to a head kick to a left hook to the butt like he was just fucking locked in dude i thought he did such a good job so shout out Rick yeah, mitch Flores. was really good too yeah uh th dude there's this part where god who was it i can't remember exactly who it was which fight it was but ray's like wait wait hold on he's threatening again with the rear naked choke and mitch goes not really and he yeah. starts like <laughs> talking about how he's not really threatening i was like which is great yeah, it's still good, man. Like, it was good. They bounce off of each other really well, you know, yeah. and at the exact same time, for anybody that's watching, it was also an educational piece instead of just calling what was happening because Mitch switched into, like, not really threatening. Let me explain why. And I was like, yeah. dude, that's so good. So that's good. All right. you, that's what you want. That is peak combat sports commentary, in my opinion. Play-by-play -play yeah. color commentary, that's how it should work. Yep. I mean, the last person that I heard do just as good of a job commentary was uh, this guy named Will Fredrickson at some regional fights. Over in Santa Cruz. Shout out that guy. That was huh? fun. That was that fun. Was, that was fun when I was listening <laughs> to you, man. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we also had uh Mamudi versus Naito. Bro, real quick, let's we'll just start off with uh showing what the fuck happened in this fight. Ooh, um nice because Jesus Christ, dude. Mamudi loves that spinning back fist, doesn't he? Dude, I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ, I think Christ, dude. I think what I text you was rinse and repeat. Yeah. Like it worked at one time. And then after that, he's like, oh, okay, cool. Like it's going to continue I mean, to land. And he knocked him down in the first round with the spinning back fist. That was the finish there. But um, in the first round, he drops him with the spinning back fist. I thought that was a wrap, honestly. The way Naito went down, I was like, oh, yeah. in the first. But props to Naito. He stayed in it. Um, Mamudi, though, dude was firing on all cylinders the body shots anytime they go forehead to forehead he's just like all right cool bah, 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 just to the body and it was crazy dude this was a fun fight i think so naito gets dropped to your point i didn't think he was going to get back up he does mm -hmm. get back up i don't know if he was all there the rest of the fight and i know that it was still yeah, a competitive no, fight but on the last spinning back fist right like you have mamudi that's throwing combos he misses with the left 
and Lazy Lee steps over to the right. Yeah. And Naito's watching the entire time. And you see him, and I feel like he's thinking, like, pull the trigger, pull the trigger, pull the trigger, defend, yeah. defend, defend, or something. But he's just watching, and he watches Mamudi go with another spinning back fist that ends it. That's and I thought to point. myself, like, I, I think he just wasn't all there after that first knockdown. That's a good point because because he was primed for that to throw that right hand when he, yeah because he, he has it left. here yeah and you see him as he He's misses with left out of position he could have just boom gone in yeah. you know done whatever to defend but instead he just watched yeah watch him start spinning watch the fist land and then it was out yeah I mean props to him for staying through the fight but I could see that too a little bit. Uh... And yeah, props to Mamudi. That was fucking. I mean, that's got to be a title shot too. I think this was. They were both top five fighters. I mean, goddamn, Mamudi is man. someone to watch. When he dropped him with the first spinning back fist in the first round, the next thirty seconds, I think he threw like three more spinning back fists. Yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> so, so funny. funny. Hey, I got worried too because I was like, Mamudi, you got to slow down because it looks like he's recovering, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. and, and then he's like throwing all these crazy combos, back fist, back fist, back fist, uh, yeah. step in knee. Backfist. I was like, yeah. what is going on? And he he did fine. I mean, he ended up winning yeah. the fight. So with that spinning back fist. <laughs> with the yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got a couple more fights to cover. Uh, we yeah. had Yamakita versus Saruta. Pocket monk, dude. That's my boy. I fucking love that guy. I think he's so fun to watch. Um, and Saruta, dude, this fight, a grappler's delight. If you ever want to watch fun scrambles, fun grappling. Watch this fight because both these guys, both of them were, uh, both of them were going in for for takedowns. Their sweeps, their submission attempts, uh, crazy scrambles. I thought, and a very interesting showcase, in my opinion, of how one scores fights for MMA specifically. Because I think if this were a UFC fight, I think Saruta probably won Saruta this won. fight. Yeah. yeah. Um, that being said. Saruta, because Saruta was out positioning him over and over and over again. He was beating him to the punch on every scramble. Um, he looked fantastic on top. Uh, but Yamakita, Pocket Monk, he throws up that omoplata at one point, and it's deep, dude. It's a deep omoplata. Yeah. Uh, Saruta stands up to get out of it. Fucking awesome. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. That's nuts. Um, very cool. Very cool stuff in this fight. Uh, but the submission attempts, uh, Genevieve says so scrappy. I mean, it was crazy. The submission attempts, and then this, dude. Let's look at this real quick. Yeah, and while we're waiting for that to load, something that I really appreciated from Saruta, too. Just, ooh, then, whoa. Those grounded knees, bro. Yeah, I'm I think, not messing around. I think those knees, the going for the guillotine, even though he got out of it immediately, but those knees, the omoplata, actual attempts to finish the fight were always much closer than anything Saruta did to end the fight. And, and this is exactly what I was going to say before that, that video started rolling is Saruta was very much position over submission. I feel like he did a really good job. And I appreciate the fact that he just took whatever Yamakita gave him, whatever position yeah. he was transitioning into, he would just be very slick and still end up in a dominant position a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But what are you doing with it after? Exactly. Yeah. Right. And effective so. grappling obviously matters, but Close submission attempts. You know what else matters? Knees. knees to your forehead. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Oh Those are nasty. Um, All right. Yeah. And this position cost him a lot too, I think. That position there. Uh, he was in on the takedowns a couple times where Yamakita would grab him around the belly and just kind of like stalemate. And in that position, no one's really scoring. And that helps, in my opinion. And Blunderbub says Yamakita definitely had the edge in striking damage. Yeah. Yeah, Dude. for sure. All right. Good fight though. Very fun. We'll move on to the last fight that we're going to be covering, and it's going to be Amy Pirani versus Yu Yapui. Give me a hit me with the. Uh, hit me with uh, let me see if it works with the iOS. Oh no! It just gave <laughs> us. Oh, there it oh, is. There There's it is. the ring. Damn, dude. Damn. That was you after that loss. It's a great. It's a great win. Um, but Yu Yapui is one of my favorites. Um, let's really quick. Watch the finish. Shout out one again for letting us watch this. For letting us show it. Yeah. Look at that. Beautiful uh, timing on that counter left. You yeah, Pui comes in. It looks what was it? Uh left. Can you hook, go back dude. to it? 
Oh, the I mean, front kick, huh? Beautiful. Yeah, she throws the front kick to the body, and yeah. Amy just sidesteps it, throws that left hook to drop her. Oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. Lands right uh, on the money. Did you see the video of Yuya Pui afterwards, too? Talking apologizing her in the back? to her? Yeah, she's apologizing to her. Oh. After she's the one that gets knocked out. She says, what'd she say? Like, sorry, I wasn't better. Or sorry, I, like. Yeah, sorry, I didn't fight better. And it's like, oh, God. Uh, because going forward, um, Yuya Pui, or, or previously, I should say, Yuya Pui is just an avalanche. Like, imagine Marab, but striking mm. and just constantly. You know how Marab is just constantly on takedown yeah, yeah. after takedown. Yuya Pui does that with her hands. She just runs it at girls and just throws hands, throws elbows. She is nonstop. People drown to her striking. And you could see starting this fight, she was kind of doing that to Amy. Amy was just forced into the, into the corner immediately. Um, and, and she's clinching and she's just constantly throwing stuff. And they separate them real quick. And then she lands that left hook. She sidesteps the teep and lands that left hook. And it's a wrap, dude. Yeah. It's a wrap. And it's hard Great to adjustment. watch because that's my girl, dude. But uh, Prof. Amy Pierney, is she Very good. Uh, I think she might be. Uh, she's new to one. or something like that? She's new to one. I had never seen her fight before this, uh, but I will watch every single fight after this. Yeah, Very that good. was a solid finish. And the way that you, you, we ended up, too, like with her arm just like over and she's uh, just like kind of out, I was like, oh, no. Yeah, and shout out. Uh, Blunt Rope says that we've been watching you uh, win on Friday fights since she's debuted, so this one hurt, but props to P uh, Pierney. Uh, who definitely deserved a bonus. I was so surprised she didn't get a bonus for this. It's crazy. It's her, first fight. Bonus. it's her first fight, but God, one punch knockout like that. Knockout, okay, let's knockout. See more off. Yeah. Let's see what you can do next time. <laughs> can you make all it right. Happen? Hey, well, those uh, are all the fights we're going to cover. Hey, everybody. Ramiro and Will here. Thank you so much for watching that short clip. It's just a small clip of what we covered this last Sunday. Yeah, if you want to check out the full fight card recap, uh, the link is in the description, and it's going to be on screen at the end here. Uh, and don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have. Uh, and don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, and you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It goes a long way. All right, everybody, thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.